Welcome to In Case You Missed It, or ICYMI, where we share announcements and cool stuff that may have flown under the radar for OutSystems developers everywhere. Let's jump right in with the updates for April 2021. If you're using OutSystems in AWS, or want to learn more about this combo, you'll want to register for the Cloud Innovation Summit coming up on May 11th. With content for both IT decision makers and developers, there's something for everyone. We'll have a link to the registration in the description below. Next up, community member and MVP Leonardo Fernandez has published a cool style guide for OutSystems in which he discusses good practices for making your OutSystems logic flows more readable and consistent. It's an opinionated look at the topic and you might find some things you disagree with, but it's a great way to revisit how you approach structuring your logic flows in OutSystems. We'll link the blog post in the description below. Since our last episode, we've had three nifty new additions to the platform. First, Experience Builder now has new options for user onboarding beyond just email, making it easy for you to allow your users to sign in with a phone number, a one-time password, or a drawn pattern. Check out Experience Builder at the link below. Workflow Builder is a great way to quickly build workflows for your app, and in the latest update, Workflow Builder lets you create parallel workflows, allowing multiple people to act on tasks at the same time. Check out Workflow Builder at the link below. Last but not least, Architecture Dashboard, the go-to tool for finding and managing technical debt in your OutSystems applications now supports filtering reports by report creation date, so you can easily keep track of recent findings. Check out Architecture Dashboard at the link below, and you can keep track of these and other new additions to the platform at OutSystems.com slash what's dash new. One of our community members and an OutSystems MVP, Nuno Reyes, recently celebrated 10 years working with OutSystems. With a track record of contributing to the community through forums, ideas, Forge components, publications, and feedback to product teams, Nuno has set a great example of how to be a leader in the development community, and we're all grateful for all his contributions. You can learn more about Nuno from his appearance earlier this year on the Low Code podcast, where he was the season two premiere guest. This podcast has featured other familiar faces from the OutSystems community, such as Armando Gomes, Juan Neves Sousa, Stuart Harris, and most recently, Justin James. We'll have a link in the description below to Nuno's episode. Next up, let's hear from Christiana about recent Forge updates. April was a really busy month in Forge update, so let me get right into it because this will take a while. Good news, more trusted and supported components. Let's get into the trusted ones. Uh, we have two new components that were trusted, meaning that they were created to ensure that they go with the best practices in terms of security, development and maintenance. So you can trust those components. And let's start with BPT Utils. So this could be already known uh, component by some of you. And what this BPT Utils does is that it extends the BPT handling functionality of the platform to allow you to terminate processes or even delete information of previously terminated processes. So this is a, an extension to what the platform already gives you to have a better handling of all BPTs that you have in your applications. Next, we have the hash table component. Uh, so if you ever wondered how you can use hash tables in our systems, this could be one of the ways. What this component simply does is that it wraps the .NET hash table class and its methods so you can use them in out systems actions and then you can quickly use an hash table with its methods in your out systems application. Make sure to take a look at those, they are trusted and they can help you in your development efforts. And moving forward with the supported components. So this month, OutSystems launched three new components, supported ones, that go around the topic of uh, monitoring and reporting in your mobile applications. First, we have the performance monitoring plugin, which enables you to have information in real time where your mobile application can be improved in terms of performance. So it gives you the right information in real time so you can fix uh, some performance bottlenecks or issues that you might be experiencing, that your users might be experiencing in your OutSystems application. Under the hood, this is using the Firebase performance monitoring plugin. And if we talk about performance, we also have to talk about quality, at least the quality that your users perceive. And for this, we now have a supported component called Crash Reporting Plugin, which uses the Firebase 
Crashlytics service and this helps you by uh, grouping crashes and other issues that might be happening in your uh, mobile application so you can prioritize and track all those issues and make a way to improving them. So performance, you have the performance monitoring plugin and for crashes or other type of issues that are not related with performance, you have the crash reporting plugin. And finally, for the supported ones, we have the um, analytics plugin, which uses the Google Analytics for Firebase. And this can help you understand how your users use your mobile application so you can improve your marketing strategy or even your navigation within your application. So this is the last one for the monitoring and reporting and supported components launched by OutSystems for this month of April. And as you can see, this was really a busy month, but I don't want to leave without highlighting some contributions made by our community members. So let's talk about PDF annotations, the component uploaded in this month, and can help you extract highlighted text uh, or text boxes or any other kind of annotation that PDF allows. And it can convert that information into our system structures so you can quickly consume it and use them in your application. So for example, if you need to check which text is highlighted in an uploaded PDF, you can use this component. And then given that it's in our system structures, you can use it as you want in your out systems application. And then we have the color add component, which can help you go the extra mile by having a more inclusive application. And in this case, helping colorblind people better identify the colors that you have in your application. So if your application is color playing a big part in the application, this component can help you by using graphic symbols to identify each primary color. And then the mixing of it makes a different uh, color. So for example, if you have a e-commerce application where you sell clothes, colorblind people can struggle with identifying the color of the sweater that they are trying to buy. And by using this, a colorblind person can quickly identify the color just by looking at the symbol and making sure that they are buying the color that they want. Yeah, that's it for this month of April, busy, busy month of Forge updates. Once again, make sure to take a look at all of those components that I've talked about. And thank you to everyone that keeps contributing, maintaining and supporting everyone in the community. Thank you so much. See you in the next month.